Good morning. This is Faith in Our Hometown, brought to you as a community service and sponsored by Mercy Hospital Joplin. And now, here is your host, Father Jay Friedel. Good morning and welcome back to Faith in Our Hometown. My guest again this morning is, is uh, Bishop Edward Rice, who is the bishop, uh, the spiritual leader of all the Catholics here in Southern Missouri. So again, welcome back, Bishop Rice. Thank you, thank you. Uh, this morning we're gonna be talking about uh, uh, the messy world that we live in and how we might respond as people of faith to the messiness of the world. Uh, we've got all kinds of uh, dissension, all kinds of violence that, that keeps erupting into the middle of our society. Uh, all, it seems like you know, every few days we get another attack somewhere or violence erupting. We've got situations of unrest, uh, you know, around racism. We've got situations of unrest around religious violence and those kinds of things. And so this morning we're going to be talking a little bit about what we might do as people of faith uh, to address some of those things. Um, we will be right back after this Mercy Minute. Please don't go away. We'll be right back. If you are a smoker, um, you need to do anything in your power to try to stop smoking because that's probably the biggest risk factor for lung cancer. Ways to help you have quit smoking um, are either using nicotine patches, nicotine gum, there are other medications that your doctor can prescribe to help you quit smoking such as uh, Wellbutrin or Chantix. Um, there are also smoking cessation programs. But we don't know the long-term consequences of e-cigarettes right now, and because of that, they cannot be recommended as a substitute for regular um, cigarettes. At the end of the day, we would like you to be off of all nicotine products if possible. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us this morning for Faith in Our Hometown. Again, uh, our guest this morning is Bishop Edward Rice, who's the spiritual leader of the Catholic Bishop here uh, in Southern Missouri for the Diocese of Springfield, Cape Girardeau. So welcome back to you. Thank you, glad to be here. Well, we've, we've, every time we turn on the news these days, we're hearing reports of all the different attacks for different reasons, religious violence, uh, extremist violence, um, racist violence, all kinds of things. As a spiritual leader, what would you say to people? What do you say to people? Well, I can talk about actually what I, I said a couple of weeks ago when we had a, a gathering of our young people. Um, we have two weekends in July when we gather with our young people. It's called Steubenville Conferences. So the first conference we had uh, 4,700 kids and that was uh, began on a Friday night and it was the day after we had had uh, the shootings in Dallas and uh, five police officers were shot. And what do you say to 4,700 kids? Okay, I got up there, we were, I was supposed to say a prayer and bless the whole weekend, and I said, you know, every time this happens, we as Catholics need to pause and recommit ourselves to be instruments of peace, you know? So, and I talked about that, and, and you're right. It seems like every time we turn on the news or read the paper, another incident has occurred, either halfway around the world or getting close to our own city streets where uh, there's been shooting, some act of violence. How do we respond to that as people of faith? And in our Catholic tradition, you know, to recommit ourselves to be that instrument of peace. So at the end of this little blessing that I had, I read the peace prayer that is attributed to St. Francis. And uh, I kind of paraphrased it. And so I'm speaking to 4,700 kids and I'm saying, you know, Lord, make each one of us an instrument of your peace. It starts in the here and now, how you relate to the person sitting right next to you on either side, the people in front or behind you. Um, and let that be the, the revolution of peace. Our, our Holy Father, uh, Pope Francis was calling, he called for a revolution of tenderness. About a year or so ago, he used that phrase. I thought, that's captivating, a, a revolution of tenderness. Uh, and I think he said there's so much cruelty in the world. Now, this was over a year ago that he said this. And just think of all the incidences of violence that we've had since then, that uh, to counteract all that, uh, acts of tenderness uh, toward each other. So uh, he's calling for a revolution, but it's uh, of tenderness. And of course, that was ushering in for us this year of mercy. That's a great thing to focus on. Yeah. 
Why don't you say a little bit about the Year of Mercy? Um, you know, so I think a lot of our listeners probably have not heard anything about it. <laughs> yeah, and so in our Holy Father, Pope Francis, declared uh, it be began last December, and I think it goes until November. Yeah, November, and um, so it's it's just a year for us to focus on the spiritual and corporal works of mercy, you know, um, to, to remind ourselves, and I think, again, I think leading up to it, there had, there had been so much uh, violence and bloodshed and destruction that he wanted to highlight mercy. And in his uh, little document that he wrote on mercy, he said, you know, uh, mercy is the greatest sign of God's love for us. Mercy is shown Christ on the cross. The greatest act of God's mercy is Christ on the cross. And so for us to receive mercy, then in turn, to give mercy to others. And in, again, in our Catholic tradition, the corporal works of mercy and the spiritual works of mercy, to make them tangible. An act of mercy is an actual, uh, a tangible act of love. So our, again, our listeners, uh, you know, uh, you're talking to a Catholic, so uh, you got me in the audience, but yeah. our listeners are going to say, well, what is he talking about in terms of corporal works of mercy and spiritual sure. works of mercy? Sure. So corporal, the word corporal, uh, corpus means bodily. So those works that directly impact on somebody's physical body. And we get that from Ma uh, Matthew 25. I was hungry, so he gave me food. Uh, food, thirsty, uh, the drink, uh, for those who have nothing, clothing or homeless, to give them uh, clothing and shelter, uh, to visit the sick, to visit the imprisoned, and then uh, to bury the dead. Mm -hmm. And then the spiritual works of mercy, to, to really help people in the pursuit for truth, to fight ignorance, uh, to console those who are suffering. A tough one, to bear wrongs patiently. Mm -hmm. If somebody accuses some, me of something or says something about me that's incorrect, that I don't have to jump down their throat and say, let me set the record straight. Just, to, you know, people are people and they're going to think what they're going to think. You know, hater needs to hate, however they say those things. But, you know, I can't change them. What I can do is change how I choose to interact with them. So we have these corporal works of mercy to feed the poor. and.